Jeannie here. Today I am joined by a popular couple known for their acting, filmmaking, homeschooling expertise, producers of the film Miracle in East Texas, Kevin and Sam Sorbo. Thank you so much for joining me today. Well, it's a pleasure to be here. It is a pleasure to be here. We're Thank popular. you for having us on. We're popular. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> you are. You're a popular Christian couple. I, you know, I thought of saying Hollywood couple, but you know, we're so beyond Hollywood now. <laughs> not that we're not that Hollywood. <laughs> I know that's <laughs> Hollywood. That's right. <laughs> yeah, your posts, right? You're past that life. <laughs> but um, yes, I mean, and obviously your accolades, I could have went on and on and on. Um, I love that you guys, I was just reading again, and I've talked to you plenty of times, but I love that you guys met on the set of Hercules, because I think that's where most people know Kevin from. And it's just so sweet that look what the Lord did, you know, not only was the fame and all of that in the books, but your wife. So I love that. Anyway. <laughs> Very lucky. No. <laughs> so let's let's talk about Miracle in East Texas. Sure. Um, I love to hear both of your Southern accents in the film. That was so wonderful. Um, talk Thank about you. what drew you to the story. Introduce our audience to the story. Want me to go? Sure. Um, it was written by Dan Gordon. Dan is a good friend of ours. And uh, he's written many, many movies. The Hurricane, Denzel Washington, Wider, Kevin Costner, and... Uh, Friends of ours for a long time. Sam had written a script a few years back called Let There Be Light. Dan came in and did a polish on it. Uh, brought the story to us. Originally, the story was meant for Paul Newman or Robert Redford um, 30 years ago. Uh, neither of them could get the time to make it together. So uh, Dan just put it away. And then we became friends. Dan gave it to us. We read it. We fell in love with it. And I said, we got to make this wow. movie. We love true stories. And it's yeah. a wonderful story about the largest oil find in the history of the world. And it happened all by accident because the two the two con men in the movie this is a true story 1930 right in the heart of depression uh they went through oklahoma and texas wooing widows out of the money and fake oil wells well they strike oil in texas by accident and uh so you say fake oil wells they were fake they were they were drilling for oil but they really didn't know if they were going to hit oil or not and so no that's that's true because they, know, they would just they would the pretend chance. there was always the chance it was always there but they had but yeah. In their minds, it was going to be always be yeah, fake. They were going to, yeah. You know, so, but when they <laughs> so tried imagine oil, their surprise, uh, the largest surprise. oil find. Yeah. And it was right in the middle of the of the heart of the depression. Yeah. They lifted a whole community out, yeah. out of poverty. And uh, it's such a great story that I put it together as a homeschool curriculum for families. So if you're a family that homeschools, this is perfect for you. But if you're a family, that has never even considered a homeschool. You need to. You need to, <laughs> and you should download the free curriculum and get started with that. It's just a, it's just a lot of fun. And what I'm hoping that people will take away is how education should be done as yeah. opposed to the way that it's being done in our schools, because education should be fun. There shouldn't be anything that's, that's that challenging about education because uh, if you want to learn something, the challenge is just makes it more fun, you know, as opposed to, less fun. And it seems like in school, they just make it really hard, like drudgery and like hard work and no fun. Let's get back to the movie. Let's get back to the movie. <laughs> well, I just wanted to, to touch on that really quickly. I have a two-year-old and he loves to learn, right? So what yes. to your point, his idea of fun is learning, learning yes. new things, discovering. And we see that in early development of childhood. So it's interesting why we would even switch gears. But about the film, absolutely amazing. I wanted to, I wanted to talk to you both about this because you're believers. Um, just talk about how God would take two con men, two con artists, and actually still lead them back to him well, in a sense by the story. story. If you read the story of David in the Bible, you got to be going. He chose that guy. I mean, so um, <laughs> that is that is the yeah. quintessential story. Sure. Is he takes broken people and he doesn't yeah. fix them. But he makes them better. And he is a God of redemption. He's a God of forgiveness, which is why one of the themes of the movie is forgiveness and redemption. And hope. And and the true story yeah. is these men became saved. Like, like they became better people through this ordeal. But it goes even farther than that because uh, the movie ends. Our story is over. But the story of the oil continues. This is actually the oil that allowed us to win World War II, and even yep. Churchill years, credits years later. Yeah. East Texas oil with that with the win. You know, it's why our tanks didn't run out of gas before the German tanks ran out of gas, and so wow. it's it's such an amazing weaving 
that God has that God is able to do that you know it boggles our minds. We can't even imagine that 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 would even be possible. But of course, all things are possible with God. Yeah, and it's it's just it's a wonderful story. It's won ten different film festivals, everything from best romantic comedy to best faith film and everything in between. Best director. So people will people will love it. It's I directed. I was very fortunate to direct it as well. That's but wonderful. Sam's in it. We got Lou Gossett Jr. We got John Ratzenberger, Tyler Maine. We got such a great cast, and we got an amazing local cast out of Canada there in Calgary. We shot it in our, on a ranch outside of Calgary um, in Alberta. And uh, it was a wonderful location that's been used in multiple times. Open Range was shot there, Kevin Costner. Um, Clint Eastwood's movie Unforgiven was shot there, Lonesome Dove. So The Revenant. The Revenant. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's a great location. And uh, it, people said, why wouldn't you shoot in Texas? Well, it's called show business, not show <laughs> show. And you get a much bigger tax credit yeah, up there in Canada than decision. you do down here in Texas. So, um, <laughs> but it's a great movie, PG rated. You can take your kids. Opens October 29th and 30th, which is coming up quickly. In theaters. Go to sorbostudios.com. Sign up right now on the sorbostudios.com. You can click the link for Miracle East Texas. Put in your zip code. It shows you what theaters near you. We only get two days. It's a fathom event. So we need people to fill up those theaters right now and we'll get more screening days. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And tell your friends. Oh, Yes. Think of it as your 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 evangelism. Tell your friends yep. to go see this movie because you know what the 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 idea that it deals with uh, forgiveness and redemption and the benefits of forgiveness and redemption and the fact that that is one of the tenets. Uh, it's one of the traditional American values that we're losing now because of the cancel culture, which is really the opposite. It's the it's the anti forgiveness culture, and we're we're letting it yeah. seep in. And so this is really our effort to kind of push back on that and say no, no. It's better this way. But those cancel culture people are perfect. They lead amazingly perfect lives. You need to live <laughs> like them. Throw down the sarcasm. No, no, that's just, that's sarcasm. <laughs> it, it is funny. That's a, it's amazing. We want mercy, but then we don't want to share mercy to others. Yes. That's inter very interesting world we're in right now. Can yeah. you guys share um, maybe a, a time in your life where you saw the miracle hand of God, where maybe you were maybe going down another path or, or down and out and you saw kind of this same type of redemption story. You're looking at me. I am. Go ahead. Start it out. Well, <laughs> well, he almost died right yeah. before we got married and uh, he heard God warning him. Yeah. And it took him several years. Uh, it took him three years to fully recover. It took him over a year and a half to, to believe that he would recover uh, so that that was a. That I wrote was a I wrote a book. Time. It's called True Strength, and subtitles my journey from Hercules um, to mere mortal. To, to mere mortal from yeah, from I'm sorry from her, my journey from Hercules to mere mortal and how nearly dying saved my life. So it's a wonderful book. You can get it up at sorbostudios.com as well, which you should pick it up after you buy your tickets for the movie on Sorbo, <laughs> in Sorbo Studios. So and I think what what eventually happened for him. I mean, this is the way he tells it in the book. Is you know that voice that he heard was really simply the voice of presence, the presence of the Lord. You know, we are responsible for the decisions we make, yeah. for the choices that we make. The consequences are inevitable. Uh, and and the Lord provides. The Lord is there. And so... And he never promised an easy life. Right. You know, I mean, we're in not... In fact, he promised the opposite. Right? Yeah. You so will have troubles. You will have troubles. You will have roadblocks in your life. How do you react to those roadblocks that we're going to define the kind of person you it's are? It's a really fabulous book for anybody who's going through a hard time, really, uh, to, mm. to show that even... Even Hercules, uh, you know, half God play, plays half God on TV is the strongest man in the world, right? Lowercase g. And I actually, uh, I think in, in one of the chapters I wrote, um, he he was the strongest man in the world. He just wasn't strong enough, right? Because he succumbed to this terrible illness that uh, that gave him three strokes. And um, that was that was a big, that was a lot. Yeah. yeah. Well, you're, um, you're definitely a walking miracle. I, I know people that yeah. have had strokes that have not recovered. I know people that have have strokes, cannot walk straight, talk yeah. straight. So or you die. definitely are a miracle, yeah. right? Yeah. Talk about um, the troubles that are going on right now in the world. Where do you think we are in the biblical timeline? We see what's going on in the Middle East. We see all this darkness around it's the anger and the hate out there is it's it's toxic and it's expanding it's really unbelievable and to sit there and watch people here in america take the side of hamas and and cheer and go up and down the streets and say you know it's well, like we're not okay. supposed to retaliate in any way and i look at this and i go i i are, are israelites are people in this country uh, that are christians are they beheading babies i don't think so i mean it's really it's sick, the world we're living in Let's right now. Let's take a 30,000 foot view because hatred and anger really is pride. It's really the sin of pride. 
we spend an entire month celebrating pride. I think we really need to check ourselves and check our culture. And I think that, um, honestly, Christian people really need to start speaking out uh, yeah. about the culture and about what is being done and how our children are being educated, frankly, um, and all of that. And we've been very lax. Even the church has sort of sat this discussion out. They've been cowed into submission by yeah. a by a strong um, narrative. A lot of the Christian population, apathy is the biggest weapon and fear. Yeah. And it's amazing to me when you look at churches being shut, I mean, being burnt down and uh, people being attacked from by Antifa and all that. And where's the crowd? Where's the yes. anger over this? Even I mean, it's just weird United to States me that we, we allow this to happen. These attacks. And, you know, there's very little that's that's happening. And um, yeah. the, the Antifa, the, the riots, and there's no justice uh, for the for the store owners, for the shopkeepers who lost their livelihoods. I mean, you got CNN reason. sitting there with burning cars and buildings, bam, going, it's a very peaceful gathering yes, here. It's and mostly you're, peaceful. You're going, right? is, this a, is this a Simpsons episode or something yeah. or South Park? I mean, it is so unbelievable that but they wanna, say one thing and the behind them, the truth is right there. It's I, weird. I do want to say this, you know, because you ask about where we are on the timeline. And I know that there's a lot of talk about end times. When we were in the midst of World War II and gassing people in ovens, it was not the end time. Sure felt like it, I'm sure to them. Right? Yeah. The, when, when Mao Zedong uh, was, uh, was uh, effectuating the Great Leap Forward and killing millions and millions his of his own countrymen. Stalin. That Stalin. was not the end yeah. times. So I think, it's, I think it's a little bit of a danger and, uh, and a little hubris to, to say, oh, okay, now we're in the end times. Um, and the so reason that I say nothing, yeah. that it's a danger is it sort of inspires kind of a like, well, let me wait and see what happens. We are called to occupy. We are called to the fight. We are called to be representatives here on earth until we're called away. And so I just want to encourage people, stand for truth, stand for truth, stand for truth. I mean, how bad does it have to get for people to sit there and go, wow. Millions of people es escaped a place like like California for other states, for free states. There's a reason for that. And a lot of those moved to the states like Texas and Florida and Tennessee. And what do they do? They vote the same way. I'm going to like, it's like, what do you need to do? How bad does it got to get for you to finally say enough is enough? Yeah. You know, it's interesting you say that. I spoke to a Middle East news correspondent yesterday, and he basically, that's what he said. He said it had to take um something equivalent to the holocaust for the jewish people to unite because israel was very divided very the same way yeah. as america very left and right heavy conservative and progressive and all of that and it took this to he, he said now they're more united than ever because everyone's ready to fight um you know but anyway that's that's besides the point well, I just that happened in 9-11 look at yeah. how america united 9-11 it didn't take long for the divide to start happening yeah. and actually get worse right so, yeah, so sad. it's 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 really it's really sad, but we need to people need to stand up. Wake up, lions. The sheep are gonna be the sheep. We need lions to come out there and not be afraid. Yeah, and that's great. I, I love that Miracle in East Texas is coming out this month as well. You know, people celebrate Halloween and they and you know, Halloween loves to glorify darkness and glorify yep. all this stuff. And evil. and you yeah. guys are oh you shining a light. My evil plan. <laughs> this is actually an anti-Halloween play because I want it I is. wanted the film to come out to kind of allow people to go out and have a night of fun. And maybe not do Halloween. Maybe that's the choice, right? That's awesome. By the yeah. way, I have a book that just came out from Brave Books. It's called The Test of Blindhood. It's right behind me right here. And uh, it's from the Brave Books company. And it really was born for me trying to wake people up and say the lines need to get out there. And this is a book about letting kids be kids. Because look what we're doing to kids today in our culture. Let boys be boys. Let what? girls be girls. Let them grow up to decide what they want to do with their lives when they're mature enough to really make the decision. Yeah, and it's at seven years old, they're not at that place. So um, go ahead. And it's about encouraging a young boy to to have courage. Uh, to yeah. it's it's the story of a young lion who needs a lot of courage in order to save his his baby sister. Um, and you know, he has to climb the mountain and he has to get the the the, the special flower and. Um, it's a beautiful story. The the illustrations are absolutely beautiful. And of course, it's a series. Brave Books does a whole series of these kinds of books. And so you can go get the copy. Get autographed for free. 
autograph for free, but then you can sign up and get one book a month for your kids talking about different virtues. And that's, a, it's an important. Kids like four years old up to 11, maybe even 12, yeah. but it really is. It's a, it's a wonderful book series, positive book series. Kirk Cameron's book came out last year and they wouldn't let him read it in public libraries. Like it was a horrible book, but at the same time they had, a drag queens read to seven year olds because right, apparently that was okay because Kirk Cameron is very scary when people meet him in person. So it's just <laughs> one of the nicest guys ever. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly. Well, just guys, thank you go so to bravebooks.com as well. Yeah, if you can just we'll end here. If you can encourage people to to be brave, uh, those that may be a little afraid or those that maybe don't even know what their role is, if you can empower or encourage people, uh, what would you say? Well, you know what I like to say is don't let anyone set your limitations, especially yourself. Um, when I was going through my sickness, my illness, and the fight to get back to, you know, being somewhat healthier again, Sam gave me a mantra to do every day. And I looked in the mirror and I, I said, I'm getting better, I'm getting stronger. And just said it over and over again so I could believe it for that one day. And uh, I think people need to have good talks in the mirror. You know, we we blame a lot of our, a lot of our lives, the bad things that happen. Everybody's got a story. I'm not saying to say my story is better or worse than anybody's. Everybody's got a story. But the reality is you can't blame God or God you don't believe in. You can't blame family, friends, or the government. Failure is a good thing. It happens to you. You learn from failures. You got to look in that mirror and say, okay, this is on me. What am I going to do about it? Instead of whining and complaining and this becoming more disjointed, more disassociated with the world and just being angry. Because all that anger does towards other people doesn't affect their lives. It just makes your life more of a black hole they're going to keep sinking into. Mm, thank you That's both a lot. so much. That was great. <laughs> Thank you both. I appreciate you continue to produce uh, content like this that we can be encouraged, inspired, and go out and do what we're supposed to do. Appreciate you. Well, thank you. We appreciate your support and the support of everybody who goes out and buys a ticket. Miracle East Texas. Go there, sorbostudios.com. Sign up right now. Great family movie. Thank you.